Hello and welcome to the 2025 NASA International Space Flight Challenge. I'm Dr. Elodie McCord from NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. And I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Karen Ann from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory as challenge authors and subject matter expert for radar observations of Earth. Now introducing our challenge through the radar looking glass revealing Earth processes with SAR. Using Synthetic Aperture Radar, or SAR, we can image the world by emitting radar pulses towards the Earth and recording that energy that is reflected back after the signal interacts with the Earth's surface. Your challenge is to download multi-frequency or multi-polarization SAR data for an interesting study area of your choice. For example, this could be your hometown, a tropical wetland, ice sheet, forest wildfire, a flooded neighborhood, a volcanic eruption, etc., and use that data to develop hypotheses about the physical drivers operating there. So what does this challenge look like? First, you will need to decide which area of Earth you would like to explore. You could investigate an area you're already familiar with, like your hometown or a place you've visited in the past, um, or any other place that interests you, like a volcano uh, that erupted recently, a forest that looks intriguing, coastal area that has changed a lot since you were a kid, or even those farmlands you walk by every day. Wherever the rabbit hole may take you, just like Alice. Next, you will have to download freely available SAR dataset from your chosen area using the list of resources provided in the challenge information. The incredible thing about SAR data is that different polarizations and frequencies can give you different types of clues about the Earth's surface. For example, oil spills are seen in one, one wavelength, but not the others. Or forest canopies are highlighted in, only in certain polarizations. So play around with the different SAR data to get the most clues and solve the riddle of your chosen area. Your challenge is to tell the story or make hypothesis about the physical drivers at play behind what you can see or not see on the SAR images. So for example, if you're looking at an Amazon rainforest, you can tell the trees and the water apart maybe uh, which polarizations highlight each and why? Does different radar frequency highlight certain types of vegetation? Um, or if you can find multiple images taken at different times, can you detect how the forest is changing over time? So to present your findings and your story, you can use any digital medium you would like. And if you wish to do so, you can add supplemental data or information to provide more context. For example, you could add optical imagery to highlight features or even provide personal context if you're familiar with the area. Anything you can add value to the story and uh, the explanation of SAR data. For some background on the science of SAR, you might be familiar with how Earth remote sensing helps us acquire information from a bird's eye view. Spaceborne and airborne instruments image the planet and provide Earth observations to inform decision makers in lieu of or in addition to field surveys conducted on the ground. Many of these instruments conduct passive remote sensing by measuring energy from the sun that reflects off Earth, but radar instruments conduct active remote sensing to image the Earth. As seen in these graphics, active remote sensing instruments emit and receive their own sources of energy. Radar sensors use energy in the microwave band of the electromagnetic spectrum. A SAR instrument synthesizes a long antenna by combining a sequence of acquisitions from its actual shorter antenna to provide higher spatial resolution data. SAR instruments send out a pulse of energy that reacts with the Earth's surface and is then reflected back to the instrument and recorded. SAR data can be collected day or night and even in cloudy weather, which allows for critical data collection during disaster events like oil spills and floods. Please check out our resources link at the bottom right corner here for more information on backscatter, polarizations, and frequencies for more details on which SAR data sets would best fit your project. So how is SAR relevant to today's world? Radar remote sensing is applicable to essentially anything that moves on Earth. We can use SAR to measure land motion from earthquakes, 
wildfire burn scars, ice sheet dynamics, volcanic eruptions, the soil moisture in agricultural fields, the above ground biomass in forests, land subsidence from groundwater pumping, landslides, we can create maps of inundation and flood depth, detect oil spills, and many more applications. Not only is it relevant to today's world, but it's also a really fun opportunity to look at the earth from a different lens. You might be able to show the people in your neighborhood how the fields around you have become drier or wetter. You could look at how the size of forests have been changing or understand if they're healthy or not. There are so many incredible stories to tell with SAR data. So go and have fun with this challenge. Now let's look at an example application of wildfires and outline the steps we would take for this project. Here we show an Opera Aria product using Sentinel-1 SAR imagery over a wildfire in Southern California. With multiple data takes, we're able to track the burn progression of this fire. Step one is to download data. We can use either the NASA Earth data or the Alaska Satellite Facilities Vertex websites to search for SAR data over our desired study area. For this event, we would draw our bounding box over the Angeles National Forest or upload a shapefile or GeoJSON file of the fire perimeter, which we can acquire from the U.S. Forest Service. We recommend searching for these kinds of auxiliary data sets that will help you narrow down your search to avoid downloading any extra files. Because we're interested in tracking the fire, we choose to download multiple data takes from September 7th to 14th. Perhaps monthly, seasonal, or annual data sets are more suitable for your application. It all depends what type of change you're trying to study. Or if you're more interested in the different polarizations of SAR, you may want to look at a fixed point in time, but download C-band imagery from Sentinel-1 and L-band imagery from UAV SAR, for example. Next, for step two, let's analyze the data. Since we're tracking the change in time, we can view the progression with snapshots as shown here, or we can create change maps by subtracting the backscatter images from each other. If you're looking at different polarizations for your study, you may want to display each frequency in a different channel of an RGB image. You can use auxiliary data sets such as vegetation type, roads, population, bodies of water, etc. to help contextualize your maps. And lastly, for step three, we want to present your findings. For this study, we can explore many questions, such as what is the change in area between each data take of the burned area? Which vegetation types burned more than others? Did the terrain with high slopes burn more severely? Did the vegetation recover a year after the fire? And so on. The point of this project is for you to examine an area of interest and show how SAR can help detect change in that area. Whether it's a fire, flood, changing crops, urban development, ice sheet movement, and more. On behalf of the NYSAR applications team, thank you for joining our challenge and good luck with your projects. SAR can be a challenging data set to work with, but it's also rewarding because it can detect change in a way that other optical sensors are limited in. With NYSAR just being launched, you're previewing all the great science about to be done with this new satellite. So check out the educational resources provided for this challenge, ask us questions during the hackathon, and good luck.